very good. Okay. Um, here, I wanted to show you the new cells we made. We made these out of uh, magnesium and oxygen free copper. We made this shape by uh, tree roots. They look like tree roots at the bottom of this mix. You can see this mixture is darker because the doping is more. Now, here's the power oscillator running, but as you can see, the current, the current, the voltage is dropping. Now here's something interesting. I wanted to, to give you some insight into this. Okay, if I take the power oscillator off, and then I take the meter, and I put it into current, 100 milliamps. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to charge this cell. Okay, so I'm going to use this little 12 volt battery. Put this right here. Now I'm just using the 12 volt battery across it, and you can see that we're just above 50 milliamps. And now it's backing down as if it was a capacity to charge. So so far, my findings on this cell are that it works like an ultra capacitor, but gains a charge, just as if you left an open capacitor. And, and now if you see we're down to 20 mil, and now we're almost approaching 15 milliamps. So this is charging up to the level as a capacitor. And what's going to happen is... It's going to be one of these type capacitors where it's going to run for a long time without draining. So in a way, this is a good energy collector. We're almost at 10 milliamps now. I know it's hard to see. I'm trying to get it. But it's going downward. So we're almost at 5 milliamps now, and it's going to get actually 7 milliamps. And that's where it's going to stay because that's where the cell it's staying right at about six, about six and a half milliamp, because that's about the power the cell can put out under these kind of loads. But the point is, can it sustain the load like the magnesium copper with a semiconductor with the ohm? I don't think so. Anyway, let's go back now to the power oscillator and we'll read the voltage. Watch what happens. And now we've charged our, our crystal up. And I'm going to use one of Chuck's power oscillators, which is running two super bright LEDs. It's the same oscillator circuit I gave it to show. Okay, so there it is. Now we're going to read the voltage. So, I'm going to go to the 2.5 volt range. Now, I got a real analog meter here because it puts a real load on the circuit. Okay, so under load, we are reading. 2.5 volts full scale. There's one and a half volts. There's one volt. There's a half a volt. So we're reading about eight tenths of a volt on the meter. And it's holding there. And it's holding the oscillator there. But notice it's dimming because it's losing. It's losing power. But if I take it off the power oscillator, because we're only interested in real power circuits. You're not interested in running this LED, which, you know, this super bright LED. Now, you'll notice that the, that the, the voltage has 
moved up to over a bolt and a half, almost a, almost two bolt, bolt and three quarters, approximately here. So, question is, how long can it sustain that? Well, about 25 minutes to 30 minutes. So, the problem is, I think, in what they showed you on YouTube, they're not getting very much power, and the mixture is, it needs a lot of work, so you, you people got your work cut out for you. You know, probably best to wait for his next YouTube video and find out what exactly, how he's getting any current, if he's getting current, because I don't see that with this. I see minute little currents, you know, and they're not going to replace flashlight batteries uh, because of the way that you can see this is going down. Now, I'm going to do this again. This is just a little small, two and a half milliamp LED. So, I'm going to go ahead and charge this again. Now the cell, if you look at the cell, is over two volts. It's about, this is 10, 8, 6, 4, about 3.8 volts unloaded and it stays there unloaded but the minute you load it and the cell drops to seven or eight tenths of a bolt that means the impedance of the cell is not there to supply the current so let's charge it up and look at this thing again okay now it says that I have about 13 volts that I've applied to these. We already see the current goes down, backs down. So the next thing now is that's a quick enough charge. So here. Now I'm going to read the voltage of the cell. It's about 3.8 volts. I'm going to load it with this LED. And you can see the LED spray. Okay. Now, with two milliamp draw, we're at a volt and a half or better, almost a volt and three quarters. But this is going to drop down. It's going to drop down to exactly what the potential of the metals are. That's almost 0.7 or 0.8 volts. And then you're not going to get any current because the impedance is uh, too high in the cell. So the collection process, by the way, is too slow when it comes to this zero point energy, if that's really what it is. I don't think so. Anyway, if you were to build the circuits that do the pulsing like this, you can sustain that power because I can see it on the meter over here. And I'm sorry that I don't have a better camera right at this time, but Chuck's standing here. And you see what I'm saying here, Chuck? You can keep the power up. Yep. I see that. By pulsing it. So the circuits to work with these have to be pulsed. Sooner or later, your LEDs are going to go out. And then if you recharge the thing, which I think you're doing, not saying for sure, but... If this was to be a collection device, then this should just stay here like this and not keep dropping. So that tells me that whatever the cell is, it number one works like an ultra capacitor, and number two, you can recharge it. Number three, it drops just like a normal battery and stays there until it doesn't light the LED. Of which then, of course, the graph is going to show you, well, it lasted two years like that. So, I think the mix needs to be refined and the impedance of the cell needs to be much lower than what it is and still be able to collect the, the 
the energy that John Hutchinson's talking about. It's because I have older cells right here that use barium titanate and they do the same thing. I can recharge these and then take the energy from them. And this is an aluminum case and a copper oxygen free rod. So basically I think there's some form of metal that he's not talking about. I think it's an exotic metal. And radioactivity I'm not interested in because I don't want anything radioactive in the mix here. But this now it's holding after the recharge. So this is holding in about a, a volt and three quarters here. And it's just holding there. So after after that recharge, then the capacitor, however this acts, and, there, and I'm, it's looking more and more like an ultra capacitor, and you can form it. So now if I short it, I take this cell to dead zero here. And then it comes back much stronger. Did you see that, Chuck? Came back yep. way over. And see, it's much stronger now. It's over a volt and a quarter. So it wants to be shorted in between pulses. And then you can keep the energy flow up. So it's almost if each cell recharges itself. So if I keep doing this, it's easy to make a circuit that does this. It shorts it and then brings it back. Now this is probably the most unique characteristic of this cell. I keep shorting it and then I bring it back. And then I keep shorting it and I bring it back. So I hope I've helped you with this. These are my findings so far. I may discover something else and then I'll put another YouTube book. Thanks.